Okay, my friends, get ready, because this is going to be fun. This is Thomas at the Coleman Quartz Mine, Arkansas, in the Mineral Explorers. That's a Mineral Explorers channel. And Thomas Nagan is going to show us how they get these crystals. Now, don't forget, this is um, Fair Use Act. I'm not trying to steal anything, but I'm going to tell you what these crystals are and where they come from and why they find them in this particular medium. Here goes. We're at Ron Coleman's mine and we're looking at a fantastic pocket of quartz here. We've been, uh, Justin here has been taking... Look at this. Look at these quartz. This is, what they call it the wall of quartz. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is what the, the mud that's in here. Because I'm going to show you why that mud is there in a minute. Taking some things out of here for several days. And uh, how long have you been digging in this pocket here, Justin? This, uh, probably a week, week and a half. Week or week and a half, just in this pocket here. And there was approximately, probably, Eight to ten thousand pounds, maybe a little more. That, that you've taken, that you've taken that much out. Oh, how much more do you think you hope, or how much more are you hoping to get out of here? Uh, hopefully another eight or ten. <laughs> another eight or ten? Yeah. Uh, probably two or three thousand pounds. Uh huh. There's a lot of loose crystals just laying in this pocket. They look like they're. Uh, yeah, terminator hole. Yeah. yeah, this is like a uh, real one shard, a real shard, right? Because you see the mud, it's just nothing but red, red, slimy mud. Uh, this thing here, let me just rinse this off. And when you start here. finding a lot of those, that normally means it's getting close. It's, get, it's getting close to the bottom yeah, of the pocket um, because they, they fall into the bottom yeah, of the pocket. All, yeah. Most from and the right. Chip points and stuff fall. Yeah. This is natural all the way around. Look at these crystals here. They're just laying in the pocket. Really beautiful. Okay, we don't have to go much further here. I'm going to explain to you why this is happening. There, There's water. I mean, obviously, you can see it's just nothing but mud. What happens with these crystals is this is called nucleophilic substitution and then they build on themselves as silicon. Quartz is, is uh, silicon dioxide basically and it can only happen where you have extreme amounts of moisture and then there's some other chemistry that I'm not really certain about but it, it pushes everything out except the silicon. And the silicon in this particular area is just nothing but silicon. I have the same sort of thing, uh, only mine are all different colored crystals. They're not just the clear ones. Now, there's some chemistry in here like a pancreas or a, a liver or something that forced all of those other min minerals you know, metals out, basically, because that, that's what they are, is metals. That's what color, creates all the colors and crystals, and basically. And that could get rid of all of them except the silicon. That's all I can say. All right, what I got here in the microscope is a, a lung, and it's cut across. And you see all the brown-looking, dull-looking stuff? That's the mud. That would be the mud where they were pulling all these little crystals out. They are, they are crystals. But they are, are all different colors because blood is nothing but different colored crystals. Blood has all of the different metals and so forth in it that create those crystals. They're called um, uh, oxides, metal oxides. All right, so now if for some reason I was in the same chemistry as the one that created all those clear ones, these would all be clear. That's what you, and you still see the mud in between. And the clear ones would have, somehow it would have forced all that, those metal oxides out of there, transition metals. And you would end up with silicon. I, I don't know how, but it has to, it must have something to do with the salts and the, and the acids 
in that extremely aqueous solution. All right, I, what I want you to look at is the difference in this quartz versus the crystal quartz. And here, he, and they're right next to each other. Look at the size of the thing he's taking out now. Watch this. That's a big one. This is a big one here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a killer. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> My name is Thomas Nagin, and I'm a mineral explorer. You ain't lying, brother. <laughs> now, let's see if I can find this in my mud fossils. I don't have this kind of quartz. All right, you remember what you see in here, this whitish looking stuff with the black running through it. Well, here's right here. I have the same sort of thing. Now, that's a seam, they call that, instead of a vein. And you can see, you see the red blood, you see the black blood, you see the the seam that fills in with silicon. I'm going to come all the way down. This is pretty much sandstone, they would call that. And down again, you have another, the red blood is down in this area. And I, again, I don't have the real crystal quartz, but you need to be, whatever happened here, whatever happened there, was this was an area that had some kind of chemistry different than this, right next to each other. I mean, right now, this is the type, type of stuff I find in the mud fossils. You can find so much variation within inches of each other, it's just unbelievable. And, and, and you have to understand, this is some kind of a membrane, I'm sure. And then inside was the vul vugs, they call these, which are the holes in the lungs. And they are the ones that filled in with the quartz. Now, mine filled in with different colored minerals and so forth, uh, you know, that are transition metals. But in between, that shiny stuff, in between, that brown stuff would have been the blood. And we would have had the same sort of thing. And then there would have been a transition zone right here, which would have been the membrane at the edge. Inside would have been the clear stuff. And over at the edge, you'd have started to have this kind of thing. This, this is a whole new science, a brand new science. It's not just accidental that just happened there for no reason. It happened there because those are blood metal. The, 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 this is blood. All that red stuff is blood. And that has all the transition metals, and they move things through the body. Ending up with quartz is just literally removing all the transition metals. Because the quartz is silicon dioxide, silicon over here. This is all your transition metals. These are all the colors that are in your body. That's why you end up with no colors, silicon. Okay, I was talking before that all the transition metals were washed out. That's all these colors. Now, there are other crystals you're going to see, and I'm going to show you right now, that have all these transition metal colors within them. So, these colors were trapped inside. And you see all these plus two, plus three, and all these different states? Something came along that wanted to attach with literally every one of these different states and every one of these different metals, and then it just removed all of the colors, and you ended up with clear. That's what these are. These are transition metal compounds. They move everything through your body using these different attachment states. And that's how you get picked, things delivered and picked up in your body, through your body. So you're never stable. And that's why they try to find stability. Somehow they found stability that washed them out. Okay, you see this? This is another one that came out of an area where there's tons of blood. But you can see the different colored crystals in here. You don't always get the clear ones. Oh, you see that? These are different transition metals that, that crystallized because they wanted to find their own buddies to partner up with to form these crystals. Now I have a little tiny crystal here that's a different color. You see the white going into the purple? It's up in the microscope there. You're really going to have a hard time seeing much because it's kind of shiny. I'm going to try to light it differently see if you can see it. Now, you see the color here? The change in color, hold on.
there's some kind of transition in this thing between I don't know you, you really you, if you look real close you see all those little dots in there and everything it's I think there's some kind of like a tendonish thing going into muscle tissue you see this it's like connective tissue going over into muscle tissue you see it and working its way into this red stuff which I believe is muscle tissue they, things crystallize in very very different ways and it all depends on where it was and in what kind of chemistry alright you see what he's doing here he's pulling this crystal out of this mud which is blood it's just it could been continuously wet which continuously moves through what's called nucleophilic substitution it continuously gets rid of the stuff that doesn't bond well and attaches stuff that does bond well and it ends up being silicon now over here you see that it's not that but look at this this is a lung that I have here he's in a lung he was in a lung and, and they call those vugs those big holes are called vugs now this is, has vugs all over but this is the only one that's filled in with crystal all right, and it's just nothing more than a lung. This is the red blood that's in the lung. These are all the little alveoli holes. I'll show you the lung right now. Hold on. All right, that's what you're looking at right there in the microscope. It's just nothing but raw red blood. And there's like one little crystal in here, basically. Sometimes they feel completely filled. This didn't have enough water flowing through it and enough mud and around it. Because that's the thing. It will, it will transition these, these little holes into some crystal will begin to grow there. That's what crystals do. They grow. And then they'll eventually they do what they call termination. They'll grow until they start to form together like that and they'll end up with a point and that'll be the end of them.